Pete Duncanson, Media Arts Pastor, and I would like to take a moment to say thank you for being here. If you are physically here with us today, please be aware that for your safety, we are practicing social distancing and ask you to respect those that are using precautions as well. If you would like to know more about what is going on right here at Central, whether upcoming events or just learning about who we are, check us out on the web, Facebook, and yes, we even have an app for that. If the ministry at Central has blessed you and you would like to give, you can do that multiple ways. By using the physical boxes located in the back by the sound booth, through online giving, or even through our app. Thanks again for joining us today, and God bless. Amen. Good to see you tonight. Welcome to all of those who are with us by... Uh, Live stream, Facebook, wherever we are, we're glad you're here. Right in our little corner of the world, no snow, but in much of our further corners, lots of snow. Uh, my family has had uh, half a foot or so, and I know up on the mountain they've had it. But, and that's what happens in January, right? We are here tonight to be blessed. We're going to have a wonderful time. Dr. Paul, Sister Ruth, I are here with us, and it is just going to be a, a, an incredible night. And tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, those of you with us by live stream in the 9 a.m. service, you'll be able to join with us as well, okay? We are um, thankful that God is helping us to persevere through this. been a challenging couple of months here, but he is giving us faith and victory to get past the blast, right? We're going to put the blast in the past and say goodbye eventually. Let's open with prayer tonight. Why don't you stand with me in the house of the Lord? Father, thank you so much for the goodness of our God. We serve the living God. We serve the God of all goodness, and we serve the God of resurrection. We thank you that your resurrection power is with us, that you are never apart from us. You never leave us, never abandon us, and we thank you tonight that you're here with us. And I pray that you would bring into our presence very special atmosphere tonight. I pray that you would bring here into this place, Lord, the very place that we've come to gather in the tabernacle of God. Would you allow the Holy Spirit to tabernacle here with us? Lord, I pray that you would do great things, show forth your greatness, your might, your strength, your miracles, even here tonight. We'll give you all the praise for it. In the mighty name of the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ, amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's join Brother Ricky in some worship tonight. We, uh, we have been hosting Dr. Paul and Sister Ruth I here for, I guess, 20, almost 20, 20 years. And we are uh, just delighted. Anytime they can be with us or I can be with them, we're always thrilled. We traveled down. I, I was down at his um, anniversary. Was that 50? 50. Mar marriage, 40 in marriage. 50 in ministry and 40 in marriage, yeah. And uh, his story is incredible. There's a book that's available about his story. He's brought you tonight. I think most of you received his um, booklet about what they're doing in the nations right now. He really has the heartbeat of the church around the world. He's planting churches all over the place. We were talking at dinner about the nations that he's working in and coaching people into pastoring churches. And he is a uh, church planter, an evangelist, an apostle for sure. And God has used he and his wife in marvelous ways in nations far and wide. He, um, he has never been one to name drop. He, he doesn't have to tell you all the people he's been with. As a matter of fact, it's his name that many of them are glad to be a part of. But I can tell you that he has been in uh, the largest churches in the world. God has opened doors for him everywhere, and we are thrilled that he's with us again this weekend. Probably the first ministry trip in 2021. Hallelujah. We are delighted to be hosting our good friend here at Central. Why don't you help me welcome Dr. Paul I. Well, good evening, Cumberland. Well, it's a joy for Ruth and I to be back with you tonight. We'd like to say thank you very much for Pastor Doug and Pam Simon 
for your friendship, your partnership. And um, thank you for all of you prayed for us. And uh, some of you maybe um, partner with him in uh, Cry for Deliverance and uh, also partner with us as well because your support that he able to take me with him to uh, Tanzania last uh, November of the year before. And we have an incredible trip over there for training many pastors. I do some evangelist meeting, but uh, very few people get saved in different church there. I will tell you a little bit why. Um, but tonight I'm here and on a Saturday evening. Uh, that's we have time for a fellowship and uh, share with you uh, from my own experience. At, um, uh, that's a practical thing how to do. Uh, I will go to based on the uh, book of Acts chapter 19, start from verse um, 1 to 12. Uh, that's what I'm going to base with you uh, tonight to share with you. Uh, but before that, I wonder if Pastor Pam give out some of my uh, magazine booklets for this year. Uh, does anybody have one? If you don't have one, you can see Pastor Pam and get one. Okay. So, in this booklet, uh, once a year, I make this booklet to send out to our friend who pray, uh, supported us, and uh, share with them what's going on. Uh, so normally I do from October to October because that's the only time I come back from overseas to America and spend uh, October in America because a traditional AG, that is a uh, mission month. So I come back and I have our board come together to celebrate with us, and that's why we bring the, this one. So um, in the page number nine, uh, I went to Tanzania with Pastor Doug, and um, we do the, basically the pastor training, encourage them about planting church. That's what Pastor Doug's heart, and um, he did that in Nicaragua and uh, Tanzania as well. So uh, he blessed me with a trip, so I travel with him. I share my testimony, I do some teaching, and do some evangelist uh, during the whole week in Tanzania. And then at the comeback, December, we have very busy month. I first fly to Myanmar, and uh, this time I was blessed because I have a group of people travel with me. So at the 32 hour from Dolos, we get to Jengon, and then uh, we skip 14 hour by bus because this group, they said, no, we cannot sit on bus for 14 hour. Uh, so we get uh, the whole group enough for one aircraft to fly to another city. And uh, we do a special outreach by uh, medical trip. So this was wonderful. We have 22 members of the trip. Um, that uh, doctor, dentist, nurse, and pastor. So we went out to a very little town and um, we told the local church that come together to invite people to come daytime for free treatment and introduce to them in the evening for free concert. So every day we have about 300 patients come for the treatment. Our 300, we have uh, less than 100 uh, Christian and more than 200 are not yet Christian. So when they went in an area to get the number to look for the doc to see the doctor, we start sharing to them who we are, why we're here, and um, of course, very light uh, evangelism. But after that, they go through the testing. I say, if anybody come for diabetes or they need the, to test the blood, so they go to a table to see a nurse. So when she take the blood to test, she start sharing about the blood of Jesus Christ. And in the form, in the front, we have all information. In the back, we have our coat. So at the, they accept Jesus, so the nurse will put on the back. This already accepts Jesus. But if not, we have another coat there. So from that, they go to see the doctor. So the doctor, after checking everything, and doctor say, well, uh, we want to give you some medicine. And uh, this medicine is good. Some we prefer from Americans, some we... Um, by here, and we give you some vitamin as well. Uh, but the medicine I can give you only two weeks, and we're only with you here only one week. Uh, but after we leave here, there are another greater, greater doctor who will be here with you, and it's about Jesus. 
So some of them already accept this. If not, we just put on the back another coat. So I went to see a pharmacy, and a pharmacy will give them a medicine and teach them how to drink the medicine, uh, how many pure a day, with how much water, with food, and so on. But she said, this good medicine we brought to you, and we only can give you for two weeks only. But after we leave, there is something better than medicine, that's Holy Spirit. If they already accept Jesus, if not, we continue to introduce Jesus. And then, if they still not yet accept Jesus, we will send them to the next one, and very last one, we will go counseling. That's actually, that's evangelism and convert room. <laughs> so, uh, all the pasta we put on that room for counseling. And uh, most of people accept Jesus. Except one, we have Buddhist monk accept Jesus, we have Muslim accept Jesus, except one witch doctor. He is really resistant. So we have four pastors in that room and pray. And you know, the, in Myanmar, the wood is real wood. The table is about this thick, real wood. And he's sitting there and he holds the, the table really resisted. So one person in front of him talk, two of them both side and one on the back <laughs> pray over him and pray in spirit. And certainly the table he hold crack, crack, split, in, split into two and you know this thick wood he's scared to death. He kneeled down and said okay I want Jesus. <laughs> so in three day every day we have more than 200 convert, 100 percent. So in three days we have more than 600 convert. Plus, during the time they are doing there, we do a training for pastor and church planter. Uh, we train them from nine into twelve. We get lunch and we do another one from one to three, and we send them out. Invite people come for evangelism at night time. So in the trip, we have more than 1,000 people except Jesus. And all taken care of by the local church that involved with us. So that we do in Myanmar. So after Myanmar, I quickly, we flew to Laos. And I do three crusades. And we get about 100 people together in that three crusades. Get safe and start a new church in Laos. And then from there, we flew to Malaysia. We do three crusades. We start a new church in Malaysia. And then we flew back to Cambodia for the end of the year. We call the year New Year Eve, uh, December 31st. So they prepared to celebrate my birthday. And then uh, we uh, do three crusades. We have another hundred people get saved. So that's uh, December. So December is a really great harvest for us in uh, Myanmar. Uh, Laos, Malaysia, and Cambodia. Then um, you can see that's all in our magazine. So January we do celebration, um, my birthday and the new year. So I help uh, start Cambodia just for their uh, local people as well you see in the magazine. And uh, February I went back to Nicaragua. And this time, I've been to the year before, I trained about 500 church planter. Uh, that's, they have the idea come out from uh, Pastor Doug Church Plant uh, Training Center over there. So when I come, I share with them. A little bit I will share with you. Um, so they really like me, so they want me to come back on February. Uh, and this time, uh, we have more than 1,000 people attending, but out of the 1,000, 500 of them, first time come to be trained how to win the soul and how to make disciples new convert that we lead. So that's what I taught them. And I'm telling you, funny, I train them for five days, it's not tired. But when I'm signing for 800 certificate, <laughs> that's really tired. <laughs> and we have a very good trip. Unfortunately, that um, Pastor Ovidio is be with the law already. But I have a very fruitful trip. And because of my previous trip, that we have another pastor in Leong City. It's about three hours away from uh, Managua. So we went over there and do another training there. So uh, I think uh, Pastor Salvador is uh, already working to connect 
So next time Pastor Doug back, he want you go over there to do the training for church planter in that city. So they're really hungry for, for church planting. And then um, when we be back from Nicaragua, and the State Department let us know that uh, if we travel overseas, very hard to get back because the, uh, the virus. So since March, we are stuck here in America. Until now, we're not able to get out. So the whole month of March, every day I was on the Facebook to communicate with our network around the world. And then I start teaching them, so that stuck record. So after Mark, and suddenly I found out that's a new way to reach out people. That's every day I do it on the Facebook, and later on we do on the uh, uh, YouTube, and then on the Zoom. Uh, so you can see that on page 31, 32. And by the way, from Mark until December, before Christmas, I reached out more than 160,000 people around the world. On the day of Pentecost, Sunday, I have 42 hours not leave my computer unless I just go out for rest and come back. I do 70 hour non-stop to the, around the globe. And we have about 120,000 people. And many people will fill with Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Uh, so that's what wonderful. Uh, so that's all in the magazine. Uh, so... Ruth and I, we turn our living room become a small studio. We are not so good like you here. We don't have, I have only three uh, phone and that's all, and uh, my laptop. Uh, but that's how I reach out people. And now I still do that. So because of virus, I cannot travel. So I put more than 500 messages in Vietnamese on the YouTube today. So, and now I found something funny. Many anti Pentecostal Christian and pastor. They hate me before, but now they start watching on that YouTube and they feel with Holy Spirit. And through that, I have a good connection. Two people, I pray for them. One was an eight year old boy with death, God put back to life, now a pastor. Another three year old girl was dead, we pray. God run back to life. And that's 36 years and 40 years ago. Now through the YouTube, they found that we're still alive. They're able to contact us. And um, that girl, 36 years ago, she was three years old, she was dead. And um, I pray God put her back to life. Now she's 40 now, 39th December now, 40. And she's now deacon married to an elder in the church. Okay. Another a guy, he was an eight-year-old boy, dead. We pray God brought back to life. Now he's 43-year-old now, and he passed the church now. So that's how we reconnect people. And many witchcraft people, that their parents told them about me that I quick witchcraft become a pastor. So when they have all the curse come to their family and um, many member of family were dead, so they cry out, don't know how to get out of witchcraft. So through my YouTube, they're able to come to accept Jesus. And one guy, only past two months, accept Jesus. He let more than 400 people come to the Lord in past two months. And stuck a church at his home. Would every night, about 20 to 25 people come to be disciples every night in Vietnam. And then... Um, you can see in um, our Cambodia, the most difficult time for me was our orphanage in Cambodia and in Burma, Myanmar. Very hard to get food, to get all supply for all the kids during the time of pandemic. But God was so faithful. God raised up some people, even not yet saved, come to bless us with food, with vegetables, and then now they come to the Lord. So that's a great blessing uh, to our often in Cambodia and as well in uh, Myanmar. And then uh, July, supposed to be uh, a big celebration for maybe all the church in Asia. They want to prepare a big celebration for my 50 year of ministry and 40 year anniversary of Ruth and I. But you know, because of the pandemic, everything was canceled. So our children able to come to uh, Virginia to spend a week together 
And uh, I'm on the Burmese. Since I cannot go back to Burma, and by the way, you know, when I went to Burma many years ago, so I stuck a ministry very simple. Ruth and I would get our airplane 14 hour by bus. When the bus stuck, we get a small car, got taxi, six hour taxi was stuck, we get out, we get on a motorbike, two and a half hour motorbike, cannot drive anymore, we walk one and a half hour, so we get into the village, first night, we have 15 people get saved, second night, 25 people get saved, that's how we start ministry over there. So now, God bless us. Um, I started one church a few years ago, and uh, a Bible school in Myanmar, and now that church, during the time of pandemic, they stuck seven new churches. That's in Burma a lot. And we have two in Vietnam, one in Australia. Uh, so through that church, I was able to reach out Burma, Burmese people in Malaysia. We stuck four new churches for Burmese people in Malaysia in 2019. Here in America. So I... Ask them, do you have any Burmese friends live in America? I want to contact them. So, thank God, because we were stuck here in America. So, I was able to contact. So, we helped to raise up two Burmese churches in uh, Hampton Road area. And we raised up two sons growing and take care of church. One's about 50, one about 80. Near time of pandemic here in Hampton Road. So, thank God. So, nothing impossible to God. Um, so that's all about this. So now, I want to share with you how can we do that. And I have a very good report in uh, Europe. You know, I have been working in Europe for past 10 years with church planting project. So we have one Canadian guy in Canada. He uh, went to Bible school in Germany, married to a German lady, and started a church. So through a church planting conference in Malaysia, we get to know each other. And he invited me to come. So Ruth and I, we went to Germany to work with him in church planting. And you cannot believe that. In Germany, church is closed every year. Church building is selling every year. This guy in past 10 years, he stuck 10 new churches in Germany and in Austria. And little on, I will tell you how we can get there when I go back with uh, Acts chapter 19. So when I went to Europe, worked with him on church planting, and then through that I was able to get into the high school and to college to share the gospel. That's impossible to Europe. They're not allowed a preacher. A Buddhist monk, you can come. A witch doctor, you can come. A Muslim, whatever, but not Christian. That's how they hate Christian. So I did not come as a pastor, I come as a former wish doctor. So I speak to the group of students and from group to group. So I able to speak to many schools in um, Germany, in Austria, in Norway, in Netherlands. And same way we do that in Philippines and Indonesia as well. So I will go back with you a little bit. How can we do that? So tonight. I want to go back with you in the book of Acts chapter 19. I don't know if you can project the, um, Acts 19 from verse 1 to 12 on the screen so uh, everybody can follow. This is talking about Paul in Ephesus. Uh, and this is very, very important thing that I want to share with you tonight to ally with about winning soul and planting church. And we know this story uh, when Paul and Apollos went to Corinth and then later on he go to Ephesus. In verse 2, when he met some Christian there, very first question he asked in verse number two. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? He asked them. Very first. And you can find several more places in the book of Acts. When they found new Christian, very first thing they asked, 
did you receive baptism of Holy Spirit? That's very important thing. You know, normally today, when they met some new believer, they ask them, have you been baptized? Have you go to church faithfully? Have you paid your tithes? You know, all those things are important, but not the most important like the church in New Testament. So baptism of Holy Spirit, filled Holy Spirit, is the most important for a believer. Why? Because Jesus told his disciples, wait in Jerusalem until you be filled with Holy Spirit. You receive that promise with the power to be a witness. Stuck from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. So baptize with the power of Holy Spirit is a very important thing to the church in New Testament. And that's the reason why when I accept Jesus, I was trained to be filled with Holy Spirit. And in my day, I received the baptism of Holy Spirit. Same time, I received water baptism. And because I was filled with Holy Spirit only in four years, I was able to start a church with 10,570 people in four years. From a witch doctor, get saved. Like I shared with you my testimony last time that in my first week, I let seven witch doctors do the law. And I disciple them and they follow me like a father to the sons. And together, we reach our community and we let people do the law. And we start the church with our name, with our denomination, with our constitution, with our, by law, nothing. Only Bible and Holy Spirit, that's all we have. So I can tell you that according to my experience from a former witch doctor, there's no way you can win soul and make disciples and multiply without the power of the Holy Spirit. Because we are not dealing with flesh and blood, but we are dealing with the Spirit. And according to Ephesians chapter 6, we are fighting with all those darkness. So with our Holy Spirit, you cannot do anything to them. Because devil are older than us more experienced than us. So we cannot deal with them by our experience, by our education, by our strengths, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can paralyze them. So number one thing we can find in Acts 19 were filled with Holy Spirit. So when he asked, and they said, we don't know what spirit, I said, what kind of baptize? We baptize by John. So after they baptize them in the name of Jesus, then now Paul lay his hands on them and they all filled with Holy Spirit and spoke in tongue and prophesied. That's in verse 6 and 7. There were 12 men. Verse 7 said about 12 men. So after that, Paul stuck getting to a synagogue to teach boldly for three months, but there are a lot of arguments. So Paul decided to Bring them out of that argument. And the Bible says he bring them into a place called, a school called Tyrannus. That he stuck teaching them every day for two years. But now let's look at the result. Verse 10. This went for two years. And what happened? What happened after two years? Can you give me some feedback? What happened after two years? They heard. They heard. They heard. Who heard? Read and Jew. Read and Jew well. The whole province of Asia. That's a big area. So now, my question to you tonight. Though the day they don't have internet, they have no Facebook, no WhatsApp, no Viber, no Jalo, 
no FaceTime, no Zoom, no YouTube. How these 12 men able to reach the whole Asia, both Jews or Greeks, come to know Jesus? Good. Now I want to hear from you. What do you think? How can they do that? For us here tonight, I think we have live stream. I was amazing when I sit in my living room, I, my wife and I, we, we talk. And later on, I found my three phone web, sometimes 10,000 people are watching and listening. But those the day, they don't have anything like that. So how? Twelve men. Within two years, the whole province of Asia, both Greek or Jew, all, they say all, come to know Jesus. How? Anyone can help me with Please use your thinking. Holy Spirit, yes, number one, wonderful. Anybody else? Disciple, yes. I believe when Paul this Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, he said, whatever I teach to you, try to find someone to teach them and let them teach the other. So that how they can multiply. I remember early day of my ministry, after one year of converted, I started to crochet in a small stadium. Those day in Vietnam, every village they have a small stadium for the soccer. So normally that's about 500 to 1,000 people maximum. And I don't have stuff like that. I have one microphone. You know, the old days, you, just like a gun, you hit the trigger and then you talk and release. If you hold too long, it will run out of battery, so you have to really talk. That's how I do crusade. I do from village to village. Every village I come, I stay for five nights. So I send out invitation. People, come. A former witch doctor will tell you how to get a brighter future. So people want to come to know how to get a brighter future from a former witch doctor. Of course, I put former, very small, former witch doctor, small, but get a brighter future, big. So everybody wants to know how to get a brighter future. So they come to listen. So I share with them my testimony based on Jeremiah 29, 11. And people get saved. So first night, if I have 30 people get saved, I ask them, okay, after I pray for them, I say, I need you to talk to you. I said, okay, now you come to know Jesus and the Lord Savior. You worship Almighty God. But if you go home, your family, your friend, your relative will ask you, you believe in God? Are you going to tell them yes? Say, yeah. If they ask you, well, your God, can you show me your God? If I can see your God, I want to believe too. How can you answer? How, Pastor? I said, no problem. Tomorrow, come back 10 minutes earlier before I start. And I will tell you how to answer that. So now they're excited to come back next day. So I spend 10 minutes to teach them. You know, very simple. Like you walk through a, a palm uh, meal, a coconut meal, uh, a coffee farm. You see, every tree were alive, straight. You don't see people who measure, who did the whole plan, water, taking care. But you cannot say that, oh, that's accident that's come like that. No. So I just think, you know, you don't see electricity. If we ask, do we have electricity tonight? You say, yes. Say, How do you know? We cannot see electricity, but we see the lights is shining. We know the air can or the heat is working. So we see the result. So when you look at the whole universe, everything is in order. We know there is a God behind. 
So, of course, I had more to, I talked for 10 minutes like that. So, say, are you okay with that? Say, oh, yes, I know how to answer. I said, okay, if they're going to ask you, now you believe in Jesus, that means you reject your ancestor, you don't worship your ancestor anymore, you betray all your ancestor, you rebel to all your God, how do you answer? How can I answer that? I said, okay, come back tomorrow night. I will give you another 10 minute teaching. So I teach them in five nights, only five simple questions. So by the end of the week, I moved to another stadium. I left two deacon or church planter behind to continue to teach them for another three weeks. And then we baptize and we start a church there. And sometimes we set some new guy become a deacon in the church at the one month of conversion. But that's how church multiply. So I moved to next stadium. So for 53 weeks in a year, I preached more than 40 weeks in different villages like that. That's how I multiply church. So I start assembly of God, even under persecution of COVID, we do the same style but smaller, house to house, for personal discipleship. And my emphasize always multiplication like rabbit, not like elephants. Do you know what it means? You know that story? Okay, I'll tell you a story. Have you seen an elephant? Yeah, I went to Tanzania. When we go to safari, we can see elephant far away. But we don't see any rabbit. So I asked the driver, the pastor in the I said, how come beach safari like this? You don't have rabbit. He said, oh, million of them. I said, no, I didn't see anyone. He said, you cannot see rabbit. I said, why? He said, because rabbit, they live under grass or under the hole. So elephants beat everybody can see from miles away. So I want to do this to share with you. You know, an elephant, according to the scientists, there, it takes 18 to 20 years before a female elephant able to conceal. At the female elephant conceal, she will pregnant her baby for two years. None of you lady want to pregnant for two years. <laughs> And the elephant pregnant for two years and deliver her baby. She has to nurse her baby for another two years before she's able to conceal again. So it takes ever 20 to 24 years for a female elephant to reproduce one. Now, let's look at rabbit. The baby rabbit, after two months, she can reproduce her first with 10 to 15 baby. But after that two months, now every month she reproduce 15, 15 every month. That's how rabbit multiplication. So with 24 years of elephant, that rabbit can multiply millions of baby rabbit. You see how different? Now, same way. Planting church in all the traditional way is like elephant reproduction. But planting church in movements today in the world, just like rabbit multiplication. Now, if all traditional way you want to plant in church, number one, you need to go to Bible college. Four years. You will learn all the answer. But when you go to mission field, you don't know what question were. So that's why many graduate students from Bible college need to go to a church to be a youth pastor, children pastor, music pastor, or internship, whatever, for two years to four years to learn the way. And then after learn the way, they will be asking people help to go to plenty church. So to plenty church, many of them have a different way. 
I remember one time I speak in a Bible college graduation. So I asked among 80 student graduates, how many of you are going to planting church? Only one guy raised a hand. I said, I'm so busy, but I want to give you at least two to four hours to talk with you about church planting. So after that, in the evening, he sit down with me. So I asked him, okay, do you really want to plant in a church? He said, yes. I said, okay, tell me how you're going to plant in a church. He said, well, I will go to internet and I will make a research. I will look for an area that where all the wealthy people like doctors, lawyers, staying. I will come in and I will rent out a building, renovate it, put a really nice sound system, beautiful light system, and the in brochure and say now, invite them come for an hour. He's so excited about that. I said, how did you get the budget for that? I said, well, we will borrow, we will be ask many church supporters, and then uh, we go through that. So he's so excited about that, and he looked at me and said, Dr. Paul, what did you think about that? I said, are you serious? You want to ask me that question? He said, yeah. I said, do you really want to hear the, my answer? I said, yes, that's what I want to, to hear from you. I said, stupid. He looked at me, what do you mean? I said, do you think, though the doctor and lawyer, they're stupid like you? They know you graduate from Bible college, you have 30, 40,000 debt behind. And you think they come to pay your debt? No, they're not do that. So he looked at me and said, Pastor, how can you plan church? I said, well, the other day I told them, that means 10 years ago. I said, 40 years of my ministry, I only built two church buildings. But I built thousands of men and women planting church. That's how I have planted thousands of church around the world. Because I spend time to build people and let them build the building. To say how. So I say, okay. I share my own experience. When I get saved, next day, they send a witch doctor come try to bring me back to the witchcraft. I let him do the law. I disciple him. And I told him, you have to share this to another one. So he accept the law. Next day, he brought another witch doctor come. I let him do the law and disciple two of them. Two of them continue to go and bring out. That's why in first seven days, I have seven witch doctors come try to bring me back to witchcraft, and I let them do the law, and I disciple them. And each of them, they have a group of people that they know. I ask them, bring them. So I start very small evangelism meeting, though the day, maybe 30, 60, 100, and keep multiplying until when I get into the soccer stadium. That's how I, I do my discipleship. When I saw many people, they go to church for years, they do all church activity, but they never have a personal relationship with Jesus. I saw some people go to church for years but don't know how to pray. Their prayers only begging God for things, but they don't know how to pray. Last time when I was with you, I shared about prayer from the outer court to the holy and the most holy. Many Christians today don't really know how to pray in the holy or most holy. Only thing they know that they go to out of court and begging and crying. But they don't know how to use the prayer to against the devil, to buy the devil, and to cast out devil, to set people free, to heal people. And bring them out of darkness into light, out of Satan into God's kingdom. So I start make disciples by this a new believer. How they can pray. So I have 10 lessons, very simple. First, pray. What is pray? You know, every human being on earth pray. But they pray is a begging to any God in the time of their trouble or the moment of their problem. You can see that in American after 9 one 2001 
every church will pack for about a month, I think. Because in the time of trouble, people come to fireplace to refuel their soul. That's what the Bible says. So people go to church, go to religious activity to beg in something for their soul in the time of trouble. But they don't really know how to pray. So I think about pray. So pray to who? Pray to God. So of course I share them all different kinds of gods. When Paul, he went to city of Athens in Greek, he saw they worship all kinds of God, and they even have an altar that unknown God. So people cry out for all different kinds of God. Tomorrow I will share more about crying to different kinds of gods. But always cry out. But if you know there is a God, your creator, your maker, your life will be different. That's what I'll share tomorrow. But tonight I will continue. Many Christians today, they don't know how to pray. Pray, in America you have a lot of material teaching about warfare. So pray, last time I shared with you three levels, out of court, holy and most holy. And I'm glad to tell you that with the Pentecostal believer, you must learn how to pray in the most holy place. That where your spirit communicates directly with Holy Spirit. To be able to do that, you have to go back with verse number two. Have you ever received Holy Spirit? In my coming book called Super Yoga, I'm teaching very clear about this one, very detailed. Because yoga has become popular worldwide today. And even some Christians don't understand yoga is Hinduism. That's a meditation. That is spirits, small s. But why yoga is successful? Because in India, Hinduism, belief, different from Buddhism. Actually, both of them come out from the same God, Buddha and their God. But Hinduism in India and Buddhism in China. China when the king of China, they found out that the king of India, though the day the king, they're afraid one day the people will be getting more educated, more wealthy, they will overthrow the king. So that's the reason why the king set up a fund and hired some people, went out and shared what Buddha taught and create a doctrine and make people believe in that doctrine to submit to the king. So what doctrine were? Reincarnation. If you're born in this class, be patient, be humble, serve your king, serve your leader, serve your God. So after you die, you reincarnate into the next level. So after many, many, many reincarnations, one day you will be born in the king palace and you become the king. That's how they deceive people, to keep people calm now and serve them all their life. So when the king of China, they saw that what happened in India. Indian, by the way, second world largest population. China is still number one, India number two. So China, they send a group, come to learn, and they bring us all. And you need to know this. Though today there were no recorder, there were no printing, no computer. How come they get all the teaching of Buddha? So they come to check out people. So they write it. So there are three books. And each book about 35 centimeters, more than one foot. So three books of Buddha is almost four feet of scripture. And what is that all about? That's about reincarnation. So Buddha is the God, reincarnation is the doctrine. So China, they bring all that back and translate into Chinese. And they call Buddhism. Because you know China always want to copy with our copyright. So they change the name a little bit. So that's how they convert from Hinduism into Buddhism. And Hinduism, they 
allow the woman, because in Hinduism, they believe the woman more than Chinese. Chinese, they don't believe in woman. Woman is nothing. Just like in old time, Baba, the woman don't have a name. Always call her name after her husband name or her first child name. That's Chinese. So now, why? They go back with Old Testament. In the spirit world, women always more sensitive than men. I don't know. The congressman prayed the other day. He understand that or not, but he pray a man and a woman. You know. But uh, it's not another story. It's not that like that. A woman in the spirit world are more sensitive than men. You remember in the second king when Elijah stopped by the house of Sunamis woman and she recognized right away. She told her husband, honey, the man come to our house for dinner is a man of God. I want you to build him an upper room, put a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. So whenever he stops by, he has a place to rest. Her husband don't realize anything, but he just listened to his wife. So he built an upper room for Elisha. And of course, after that, you know that the miracle, they have a son, when the son die, Elisha brought him back to life. What my point here is in spirit world, if you continue to go all the way to New Testament, you see the same thing. By the way, Ruth and I, we do a lot of women conference. And you know, when I told the Asian woman about the woman in the Bible, the eye open because they were born and grow up in a society that they look down on women. But I say in the Bible, women different. Why women important? You remember in the day of Jesus, when Jesus showed up any town, people surrounding him, women always cook and serve and clean up. That's all they did. All apostles surrounding Jesus and enjoy sigh, wonder, miracle. But when Jesus was arrested and hang on the cross on Calvary, very few disciples show up, but a lot of women were there. When they placed Jesus in the grave, none of his disciples show up. They all ran away. Even they went back to their old town, look for the old job. But the woman show up. And women were the first one to recognize Jesus, arose from the death, and they went out and preached the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the apostle did not believe it. So when men disappeared, the woman would show up and make the job done. So in Asia, when I preached that message, women jump up and down, wave, they go, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? The same way. That's the reason why when the serpent came into Eden, did not come to Adam, but went to Eve. Because in spirit world. And you will continue that you see that in the Bible. Now, I tell you one real story. We all heard Dr. Yanggi Cho have a world largest church in Seoul, South Korea. And the church building located in the front of Capitol Hill. That's another story of woman. Many people don't know this story. When government moved into Joido, Joido just means an island. And they start building the new all government capital present palace there. And of course, they always try to make people happy by designate a piece of land for religion. That them. And religion in Korea is Buddhism. But somehow, Dr. Cho, mother in law, she heard that there is a piece of land designated for religion. So she told Dr. Cho about that and pray. At the prayer, Dr. Cho said, Mom, you and my wife, go and look for the mother-in-law of the mayor to check it out. 
So of course, they invite her come for tea and they chat, they found out. So they reached out to the major wife to make sure that they know everything. And through her, they know, yes, that a piece of land designed for religion. And of course, religion of that is for Buddhism. But they accept and they to get all information. So they know. So they made application, everything. So when they put on the newspaper, that's this piece of land, whoever religion wants to get this land, that send application. Dr. Joe, first one, <laughs> send their application. Of course, he get that piece of land. That's the best in the front of capital of South Korea. Because the woman. And you can learn a lot of story in Korea. That's, and majority church in Korea, planting by lady. And that's opposite with their culture. You know, Asian culture, the wife three step behind husband. Men and men can hold hands and walk and talk, but not his wife. His wife three step behind. That's their culture. But under Pentecostal, God raised up many. Now you can see that in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Singapore, in Korea, even in China. The culture is totally different. I went to China every year before the pandemic. I went every year. I spent a month of their teach and graduate and ordain pastor. So every year we ordain about 250 pastor, and 75 percent of them are lady. Only 25 percent are men. That in the China. That the culture break totally changed from their culture. Why? Because, again, number one, Act 19 says, be filled with Holy Spirit. When I'm talking about spiritual, ladies are more sensitive in spiritual. That's why we need to equip in them and fill with Holy Spirit. By the way, when I read the old story of the Azusa Street and Assembly of God in America, though the day, after they get out from Azusa Street, they get on the train, and wherever train stop, though the lady go out and share the gospel. I found that early day of something like that in America, many churches were planted by women. They got out from Azusa Street, get on the train, wherever train stop, they get out and they minister that how they stuck a something like that church. So when I read some that article many years ago, that with Methodist, Wesley had to get on her horse, go from town to town. But with Pentecostal, at the Azusa Street, women get on the train and get out the train. So I can tell you that I travel around the world. I found out that women in spirit, they are very sensitive. If they are filled with Holy Spirit, I am telling you, when I stuck Assembly of God of Vietnam, 70% of my pastor leader are lady. And all the church are pastor by lady, always number one, fast growing. Number two, highest income of the church in tithes and offering. Lady always very good on both of them. So many other denominations start learning from Assembly of God in Vietnam. Of course, they don't have well discipleship programs. Sometimes they mess up their, 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 their denomination. But for us, when we have a very good discipleship program, and in my book, you know, I have a book. Um, in that book, I have many things to say about, about discipleship. How can you disciple someone, never go to school, they don't know how to read and write? Uh, you call what that uh, illiterate? They don't know how to read and write. And we disciple. In my book, we can disciple them by picture. We draw a picture. That's how we make disciples. And though the men and women are disciples 40 years ago, they don't have to read it right. Now they have master degree. Some of them have doctor degree. Forty years ago, they don't have to read it right. And I have some story: a lady never been to school, don't know how to read it right. After they get saved, in one month, we disciple her every day. She know how to read, and she read through New Testament in one month. And you know, I never been to English school, but I can speak English. People ask, "How can you speak?" English? I said, pray in tongue. That's my secret. And to be honest, that's true. I learned English by praying in tongue and read Bible. And you know what? I read Bible in those days were all King James Version. That's like Bible written in tongue. <laughs> but that's how I learn English, how I pray, how I preach. So I go back with Act 
chapter 19 were too important to I want to share with you tonight. That each and every one of you can do it. Number one, you can be filled with Holy Spirit. You believe that? How do you believe you can be filled with Holy Spirit? Uh-oh, some people not believe you can feel the Holy Spirit. I think you can stay here tonight. I have another lesson to teach you about how to receive Holy Spirit baptism. It will take you about an hour. Well, I can tell you, I teach a lot of people feel the Holy Spirit through my Zoom. I have people from Russia, from Germany, from England, uh, from France, feel the Holy Spirit through my, my Zoom, and many in Vietnam as well. So number one, you can receive baptism of Holy Spirit because this is what God promised to you. According to Luke 24 and Acts 1, Acts 2, all the way. Number two, you can learn and teach others like the school of Tirano. Only two years, 12 people, 12 men, reached out the whole Asia, both Greek and Jew, come to know the law. If it happened in the other day, why not in our day? And it already happened in my life. Over 40 years ago, when I stuck underground church in Vietnam, we don't know what email was. There were no email the other day. The other day were no computer. And there were no cell phone like we have. Early cell phone the other day, it's big, about five kilo cell phone that you use 10 D battery, big. It carry about 10 pound cell phone. And that cell phone only worked 25 miles only with a big antenna because my dad was a mayor of the city that he had that cell phone to carry with him. A 10 pound cell phone. And only 25 miles with a big antenna. So go back with the day a book of Acts chapter 19. When I learned that, I do the same thing. And I have no freedom because communists not allow you to do that. But that's how I stuck assembly of God to Vietnam, I stuck assembly of God to Cambodia, I planted thousands of churches. And I'm just normal like everybody. Actually, matter of fact, I was a new believer the other day. But it happened in the book of Acts, it happened in my life. Now, Many of my disciples, but one of the disciples on the way here, Pastor mentioned about Joshua. He went to China. In eight and a half years, he planted 2,400 churches and stuck to our Bible school. So people were wondering, how can he do that? Well, he just teach English. And somebody come to learn English, he used the Bible as the textbook teach them. And that student gets saved, he disciples them. By the time he graduated from university with a bachelor, he get a diploma in biblical study. And how he do that? He did why? Only two of them. So if he teach people you graduate first year, if you want to go second year, you have to volunteer to teach first year. So every year, when he gets into the higher level, he has to teach the next level that he just started. And you know, it worked very well. He told me that that person, now he learned to teach others. So he not only memorized well, but when he teach, he memorized again. So in China, he does the same thing we do in Vietnam. We teach with our uh, Bible or uh, book in our hands. He does teaching, people listen, they take note and go home, when they do homework, they put everything they learn on their note in a notebook and make that become their curriculum for retrain other people. That eight and a half year, planted 2,400 churches, stuck to our Bible school. And they even sent missionary out of China to many countries, to Pakistan. You heard about the couple were kidnapped by ISIS and had in Pakistan, that come out from China movement. So all those the things happened in the New Testament, book of Acts, happened in my life, happened in the life of my disciple. And it even happened today. Like I mentioned to you, 
one of my spiritual son in Burma, during the time of pandemic, he stuck seven new churches. So it happened in, and Burma had no freedom like we have here in America. It's a Buddhist country controlled by military. I have no freedom like we have here. And though the village, no transportation, like I mentioned, Ruth and I, motorbike, walk, some village, we get a motorbike to the bottom of the mountain and we have to walk, climb up all the way up. That's how they do. We went there. Every year we made four trips to Myanmar. Each trip was there, a month of there. So I can tell you, though the place very difficult, but it happened. We got two things. Two things that I share with you tonight. Number one, baptism of Holy Spirit. Number two, discipleship. Learn and teach others. That's what happened in Act 19. So it happened in the New Testament, happened in Vietnam, happened in China, happened in Myanmar, happened in Thailand, in Laos, Cambodia, Malaysia, Indonesia, I believe that's where I'm working there. I believe it happened here in America too. So tonight I live with you, that's all real story and the practical thing that you can do that. You can do that. I just shared with Pastor, I just stuck a new church in Australia. For many years, I don't want to go to Australia. But then when I have a spiritual son over there, they want me to come, so I come. So I know that when I come, I don't want to preach in the church because my principle, if they already have that doctrine, that denomination, I know they were anti-Pentecostal, so I don't want to bother. I go to non-believer. So I went over there. I reached out non-believer community. Ruth and I, we stay there for one week. We pray for many people get saved and delivered from witchcraft, from demonic, and that's how we convert some Baptist church become Pentecostal church over there. Even the guy who prays in a Vietnamese Baptist association filled with Holy Spirit speaking tongue. So that's the reason why we come back. So we trained over there and one of our young men come to me and I said, I don't want you to waste your life in that church. You've been there for 15 years you didn't get a soul. So why you waste your time? I would like you to go out on the market, pray for people, be healed, be delivered, and disciple them. So he don't know how to do that, but last year because of pandemic, all the church shut down. So now he and his wife go out to the market and pray for sick, pray for delivery. That's how they stuck a church now. They have 27 people meeting every week in different homes. So when the lockdown, they decided, okay, let's come. Every time we come, about seven people. So they live every night, they have meeting in different place. That's how they stuck a church over there. In Vietnam, I have a gangster. He ran for his life from Vietnam to Malaysia. We read to him, we disciple him, and I told him, you have to go back where you ran away, share your testimony. So during this pandemic, he stuck at church with over 37 people already there in his home. Discipleship one-on-one. It worked. It worked in the Bible. It worked around the world. And I believe it worked here in America. So I would like to share with you that if you want this church multiplied like rabbit, every one of you can do it. You come here for discipleship, you go out with people, and you can disciple them. Back with the New Testament. Everyone know how to win so. Everyone know how to pray for the sick. Everyone know how to pray for deliverance. You can see that in the whole book of Acts. And God, we are believed, same yesterday, today, forever. So that what happened to me, to my disciple, it still happened today in different country, communist country, Muslim country, Buddhist country, military control country, it will happen in America. And what all things happen around America right now, I'm telling you, 
one-on-one -on -one winning soul, one-on-one -on -one disciples, still working well. And if we apply it, we go to see a big result. So if you want to see all Cumberland, we come to know Jesus like what happened in all Asia, both Jews and Greek. Each one of us can do our part. And as we do our part, God does say, Amen. Thank you. God bless you. See you tomorrow. I want uh, Dr. Paul to be able to pray for us. I know we're in a different environment, but I believe that if you are uh, hungry, if you want prayer tonight, I believe that God is going to help us. Amen. Stand with me this evening. Glory to God. Father, thank you so much. Mm, thank you so much for loving us and caring about our needs. And our greatest need, Lord, is to give others the good news. Our greatest need is to be a soul winner. Our greatest need, Lord, is to be that one that you're using, to be used by God, to be sent out into our workplace, into the marketplace, Lord, to be used by the living God, to be used by the God that cares about all lost people. What a privilege. What a privilege, Lord. What a blessing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, help us tonight. Help us as we wait on you in this place. Bring the power and presence of the Holy Spirit to come in to our needs right now and identify for each of us what you want to do in these closing moments tonight, what you want to do in our lives, how you want to touch us, how you want to help us, how you want to give us a breakthrough, a miracle, a deliverance, an answer, how you want to lead us and guide us into tomorrow. Lord, we're here. Holy Spirit, move in this place. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do and we'll make ourselves available. Wonderful Jesus. Praise God. How, how overwhelming is that for somebody to say, as Dr. Paul started tonight, well, I raised that one from the dead and then I raised that one from the dead. And that wasn't even the focus of the testimony, let alone the whole night. You know, if that was an American, right? An American preacher, the whole night would be spent on talking, telling you how he or she raised the dead. When we're serving the Lord, he gets the glory, right? He's the one that we're focused on. When we're serving the Lord, our, our passion is to be with him, to be connected to him. And whatever you have come into this place tonight needing, whatever spiritually you're hungry for. You know, many of us are on some sort of a fast. Sister Pam and I are winding down a Daniel fast. Glory to God. I believe that when we take that kind of a step towards God, He's already taking His steps towards us. Amen? If you've come here tonight and you have a, a need in your life and you'd like Dr. Paul to pray for you, he has a mask on, and we're going to believe for the first miracle to be no virus. The second miracle to be that God's going to meet your need. Amen? Whatever that is tonight. Dr. Paul, before we end this time, I want you to pray for, for me and my pastors here in this place. I want us to, to be able to be prayed for tonight. Whatever you need, I, I want us to take two or three minutes tonight and ease back into where we were a year ago. Ease back into believing that God wants to do things at the altar. Sometimes we come to this church and there are a lot of people and, you know, we don't want to be uh, in somebody's way at the altar, so we hold back. We want somebody else to get. But tonight, there are just a few of us in the building. Tonight can be your night when there's no crowd. You don't have to say, well, I want to make sure somebody else has their opportunity. Tonight is your opportunity. Tonight is your chance to let God do that thing that you've been believing for him to do. As I pray, if you want to slip out and just come right into this little area right here and let Dr. Paul begin to pray for you, and then I'm going to have him pray for uh, the pastoral team here at Central. Father, we thank you tonight for the healing power of the Holy Spirit to heal us from our hurts and our wounds, to heal us from our diseases and afflictions, to heal us from our lack 
and our poverty to heal us from memories that hold us back from success and development, but most of all, to heal us from being reluctant to share our faith, to share our story, to share our testimony. I pray for the healer to come here tonight and do the work that only he can do. Glory to God. Oh, in that mighty name of Jesus. Come on, if you want Dr. Paul to pray for you tonight, feel free to step out right now and let God do that thing. Let God encourage you in that way that only he can do. Let God speak into your heart tonight and let God get the glory for it. Amen. How's God going to get any glory if we don't let him do something for us? Amen. That's what he wants to do. And if we'll let him do something great, he'll get glory for it. I'm telling you, don't hold back. Don't be reluctant. Jesus, thank you tonight. Thank you tonight. You're in this place to help us. You're in this place to sustain us. You're in this place tonight, Lord. Give us breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Thank you.